Hey guys, my name is Tensor. Welcome to another Dart tutorial video. Today we're going to be doing something slightly different than we've done before on this channel. We're going to create a client-side Tetris game that looks a bit like what I'm playing right now. In this part of the tutorial, we're just going to be building out the model and basically setting up all the stuff that we need to make the game work. And then in the second part, which will come out tomorrow, We'll be finishing the game. The first thing that we need to get started is the stagehand tool. We can go into our command prompt and run pub global activate stagehand and this will go and get the stagehand tool for us and if you already have it it will update it to the latest version. After you've downloaded stagehand you also want to go ahead and get web dev. Web dev is a binary that will help us compile our Dart into JavaScript and then serve it on a development server. So again, we're going to run pub global activate web dev, and this will go download the binary and then install it for us. Now, after we're finished doing all of that, we want to go ahead and scaffold out our project. This is just going to be a simple client side application. And so we're just going to use the web simple scaffold. So we just call stagehand web simple inside of the folder where we want to put our project. And the folder that I created is just called Tetris. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and run pub get to get the dependencies for your application. And then once you've done that, you can go ahead and run web dev serve, which will compile the generated Dart code and then serve it to a development server. And this is a good way to check to see that everything worked properly. If you point your browser to localhost 8080, you'll see some text that will tell you that the application is running. And that's how you know that the stagehand tool worked properly and that web dev is working as well. Here's what our generated project looks like. We have our pubspec YAML file. We have a web folder and it has a favicon icon in it. It has a index.html file in it. It has a main.dart file in it and it has a styles.css file in it. And there are also a bunch of other helper files inside of this directory as well. Now for our application, we want to go ahead and create a folder called lib. And this is where all of the logic for our Tetris application is going to live. We can start by creating a file at the top of the lib folder called tetris.dart. And this will be the main file that will essentially combine the rest of the files that are inside of this library together so that when we import this file, we import everything into our main.dart file. Let's declare this as a library. So we'll call it library Tetris. And then we can make the imports that we're going to need for the rest of our files in this file. And we'll need Dart HTML, we'll need Dart async, and we'll need Dart math. And now we can go ahead and create the other files that we're going to need for this particular part of the tutorial. So inside of lib, I've created another folder called source. And then inside of source, I've created another folder called model. Inside of model, I created a file called tile.dart. And we want to go ahead and connect our tetris.dart file with our tile.dart file by using the part keyword so inside of tetris.dart, we put in part and then we pass in a path to the file that we want to add as a part of the library. Then inside of the tile.dart file, we want to say that it's a part of the Tetris library. The cool thing about using the part of and the part keywords is it's sort of like you're combining all of the files into one large file. So they act like everything is local. So all of the imports that we pulled into tetris.dart are exposed to our tile.dart file. And then all of the public stuff inside of tile.dart can be exposed back to tetris.dart and any other files that are also a part of Tetris library. Now this tile.dart file is just going to be fairly simple. We just want to make a tile which just has a X and a Y value inside of it. And essentially this is just a bunch of points that we use to generate the different Tetris pieces that we're going to create. So each of the Tetris pieces will be made up of four different tiles 
and then each of these tiles can be blown out to be block sized and then the block size of course will be set up when we set up the actual game logic so we just need the x and y value which will be the center of the actual tile part in the grid and then of course we want to set up the constructor so when we pass in a x and y value they go into these fields now that we have our tile class built out Let's go and create another file in our model folder called block.dart. And of course, we want to link it to our Tetris library. This class block, which we'll put into this file, will be a generalized format of each of our blocks, which we're going to create. Each block will contain a list of four tiles. So we can just say list of tile, tiles equals a list of tile, and then we can pass in the optional parameter of four to tell it that we only want a length of four. Then we need to specify a rotational tile. So one of the tiles in the four tiles will be the tile that we rotate everything about when we rotate the piece around. Then we also want a color string so that each of our blocks will have a different color. Now let's set up a method which will allow us to move our blocks around. And all we're gonna do is just pass in a string to this method and then call a switch statement which will then move the list of tiles around based on their X and Y values. So when we wanna to move to the left, we'll iterate through our tiles and each of our tiles will be pushed along the X axis by negative one. Then when we want to move to the right, we'll push it along the x-axis by positive one. When we want to move up, we want to subtract one from each of the tiles y-axis. And then when we want to move down, we want to add one to each of the tiles y-axis. Now if this is our canvas, this block here, moving downwards is actually moving from zero upwards through positive numbers in the y direction, and then moving to the right is moving in the positive x direction. So when a piece is moving down the screen like this, it's actually moving up in the y direction. And then when it's moving to the right, it's moving up in the x direction. When it's moving left, it's moving down in the x direction. And when it's moving up, it's moving down in the y direction. I'm sure a few of you are wondering why we have an up command, because in Tetris you can't push tiles upwards. We have this up command so that when a tile hits the bottom of the screen, it knows that it can't continue going downwards. So we issue an up command and then we just drop the tile. And the same goes for the case where the tile hits another tile. So the user will not be able to issue an up command, but the tile will use the up direction when it contacts with another tile or with the edge of the board. Now we want to create some methods which will allow us to rotate our tiles. First we'll create a rotate right method. In this method we're going to iterate through our tiles again using for each. We'll take the tiles x coordinate and we'll save it to a variable called x. And then we're going to basically transform both the tiles x coordinate and then the tiles y coordinate. So for instance, say these are the coordinates of our eyepiece. So we have x0, y1. Then for the rotational piece, we have 1, 1. Then we have 2, 1. Then we have 3, 1. So it's going horizontal across the x axis. We're rotating, say, this piece about this rotational piece. So the rotational x value is 1. Then the tile y value is 1, so this gives us 0. Then the rotational y value is 1. So this will just give us 1 for tile.x. And then for tile.y, we're going to take rotation y, which is 1 again. We're going to add the x value, which was 0, so that'll give us 1. And then we're going to subtract rotational x, which will give us 0. So on the other side, we'll get 1, 0. Then the rotational tile will stay the same, so we'll get 1, 1. And then you'll see here that we'll actually get 1, 2, and then 1, 3. So let's just do this one really quick. 
So rotational x is one minus rotational y, which is again one, so that'll give us zero. And then we're gonna add rotational tile y, which will give us one, which is this value here. And then for the rotational y, we have rotational y, which again is one. Then the x value, which is two, so this will give us three. And then we're gonna subtract rotational value x, which is one, which will give us two. This is how this rotates about to the right. Now to rotate to the left, we just need to reverse the process. And to do that, we just need to reverse the operators. So instead of subtracting here, we add, and then instead of adding, we subtract. Now that we have a generalized version of our block structures, let's create a bunch of classes that represent the pieces for our tetrominoes or our Tetris pieces. So I've created a new file here called blocks.dart, and this is again part of the Tetris library, so it has access to everything in tile and everything in block. And for each of our new block classes, we just want to extend the block general class that we created. Let's start with the I block, which as we saw before is just a piece with four tiles that are either horizontal or vertical. When we spawn it, we want them to be horizontal. And we can do this pretty easily using the I block constructor and passing in the width of our canvas. So we want the block to spawn close to the center of the canvas. So for the X value, we're always going to take the width and divide it by two. But of course, we want to increment along this value so that we create our actual block. So first we'll start with the middle of the screen, and then we'll subtract two from the X value. Then for the Y values and all of the Y values, we'll have negative one so that it will be horizontal. And then with the X values, we'll increment it up by one. So it'll go from negative two to negative one, to zero and then to positive one. The rotational tile of this I block will be our index of one of the tile. And then the color of the I block will be cyan, which is the traditional color of this I block in Tetris. Now we can move on to the O block. The O block just looks like a square. And when you rotate it, it still looks like a square. So we'll extend block with O block and then for the constructor, again, we'll set up our tiles. So again, we'll start in the middle of the screen. And then for Y on the first tile, it'll be negative one. Then we'll add one to the middle of the screen. And again, we'll have negative one. And then we want to double up on these two X values. So we'll again, start in the middle of the screen and then we'll add one to it. And we'll change the Y values to zero and zero. So then this will give us a block that is made out of four different tiles. The rotational tile for this block will be our index one block, which means that when we do rotate it, it will sort of wobble, but it's all right because it'll all be lined up properly. And then the color of this block will be yellow. Now let's look at the J block. So again, J block extends block. And again, we're gonna use the constructor with the width. We'll take the width and divide it by two, and we'll start with negative one with the Y value being zero. Then we'll go to the middle and the Y value will still be zero. And then we'll add one and the Y value will still be zero. And we're just basically building this stem here. Then we want to change the Y value to negative one and then add this little foot part to negative one for the X value. The rotational tile for the J piece will be this tile here and the color for the J piece will be blue. Now we can deal with the L block, which is just the reverse of our J block. So instead of having the piece here, we have it here. We need to build this stem. So we're gonna start with width divided by two minus one, and then width divided by two, and then width divided by two plus one, and then all of these will have a Y of zero. And then this final one will then add the lip to the plus one X value, and it will be at negative one for the Y value. The rotational tile will be the first index tile, which will be this tile here, and the color for this block will be orange. We can now build the T block, and the T block is like the L and J block, except the tiny piece is in the middle of the block instead of on the side. So again, T block extends block, and we create our constructor. We're gonna start at width 
divided by two minus one, then width divided by two, and then width divided by two plus one, and again, the y's are all zero. And then for this part, the y is just negative one, and we put it in the middle of the screen. The rotational tile will be this tile here, and then the color for this block will be purple. Finally, we can move on to the Z block and the S block, which are again mirror images of one another. So the Z block will again extend block, and the constructor will take in width. It's going to look like this, so we want to say width divided by 2 minus 1, and then 0, and then width divided by 2, and then 0. And then again, we'll go width divided by 2 and negative 1, and then width divided by 2 plus 1 and negative 1. The rotational tile of the Z block will be this tile here, and then the color for the Z block will be red. The S block will be the reverse of the Z block, so again, we'll have the two lips like this, but instead we'll have this facing the right instead of to the left. We'll start with width divided by 2 minus 1, and then width divided by 2, and these will both be at negative 1, so this will be the top piece, and then we'll have divided by 2, and then plus 1, and then 0, and 0, which will be the bottom part. The rotational tile will be this tile here, and the color for this block will be green. And that's all we need to set up for today's tutorial. So in tomorrow's tutorial, we'll actually look at the mechanics of this game, and building them out using the web technologies that are exposed to Dart and we'll combine them together to make a fully working Tetris game. Alright guys, well I hope you enjoyed this piece of the tutorial. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you dislike this video, then by all means, downvote it as much as you like. Have a good night.